Welcome to Forum 360 for a Zoom edition to our Global Outlook with a Local View. I'm Leslie Unger, your host today. Some of our audience may remember when education was just the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. History and geography were added for good measure. It seems like for the next hundred years since the one-room schoolhouse, education didn't change that much. Then in rapid succession, the free lunch program, desegregation, Title I, Title IX, No Student Left Behind, Common Core, and STEM. I remember the day Governor DeWine closed the schools in March 2020, and just like that, education changed again. To help us understand these changes in a broad sense and how they affect Northeast Ohio, we welcome Christine Fowler-Mack, the new superintendent of Akron Public Schools. Welcome to Forum 360. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Leslie. Thank you. So my first question is, if we were to go back and meet an elementary school age, Christine, <laughs> would, you have found, would we have found a student who, first of all, liked school? Were you one of the kids that actually liked school? I was. Mm -hmm. I was one of the kids that actually loved school. So I was, I was a child who played school when school was not even in session. And so, so school was a very happy place for me. Now, when did you know that you were going to go into education? Now, that's another story because I actually uh, did not know I was going into education, I would say, until well into my sophomore year of uh, being in college uh, because I initially uh, thought I was going to pursue another another career. And uh, it wasn't until I had a conversation uh, with my family that they said, you know, I think you're running away uh, from something that you love and that you're actually great at, which, which is education. And so I decided to take some courses and the, the rest is history. Now, what was the other career you thought you were going to go into? I thought I was going to be an engineer. And so, um, and I had gone through uh, coursework um, in with civil engineering and, uh, but then when I, and I think I was more impressed uh, with the, uh, the title of it and in the big sense. And it wasn't until I really explored uh, more experiences, more internships and um, really realized that that really wasn't a nice fit for what, what I loved. Now, you're in education, but my next question is, you know, I've had the opportunity to interview several uh, professional athletes, and I always ask, when did they know or think about going pro? And the answer is, is very different with different people. So my question to you is, when did you know that you wanted to go into administration versus right. stay in the classroom? Right, and um, it's interesting. I, I cannot say that necessarily I mapped out the pathway uh, to administration, but I always seem to be tapped uh, and offered opportunities to lead. So I've been very fortunate to have a range of mentors and cheerleaders around the way that really uh, continue to talk about the ability to reach even more students from different levels in the organization. So it was well into about my seventh year as being a teacher when right here in Akron, I was encouraged to um, try my hand at being an assistant principal. So that was my first forte into administration. Now, before I go into education, I wanted to ask you, because you have a, a pretty well-known family. You grew up in a pretty well-known family. So tell us in a sentence or two, what is it like to grow up where perhaps like everyone knew who you were? So was that a blessing, a curse, or both? It's a blessing. I have always embraced um, my, my upbringing because I think it surrounded me uh, with a broader set of families. So I had uh, my church family uh, with me always, um, who I knew was rooting for my success, uh, praying for me, uh, pushing me uh, to be my best. I had my uh, school family uh, and then the broader community. So it just felt like I was blessed to have uh, a very diverse but broad set of, of family members. But it also taught me um, a lot about service. And so it nurtured me 
into understanding that uh, part of my family's heritage and responsibility uh, was service. So I think from a very young age, I grew up with uh, a greater attentiveness uh, to the community around me of person's needs uh, in valuing all people and um, in, in having high expectations uh, for me and uh, in, you know, for what could be done uh, when you work with others. So that leads me to my next question. The superintendent is the top executive in a school district. Now, when I Googled it, you know, Google's like my best friend. Um, when I Googled it, it explained that the superintendent implements board vision. Yes. So how much of what is done in a school district is board vision and how much is superintendent vision? Yeah, so the board does set ultimately uh, the visionary goals uh, through its policy. And if you think of it in terms of the superintendent being that artist that you know brings life to it uh, through um, the members of the educational community. So through working with teachers, leaders, principals, things of that nature. Um, so I, I think it's an artful dance, uh, but ultimately the uh, goals, the objectives, the, the top level vision is set by the board. Um, and then I have the ability to bring life to that. So it's the art of the how we'll get there, which there has to be some vision in that as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, what are some strengths that you can identify in Akron Public School System that you would want to build upon to help move the district forward? Wow, there, there are many strengths. I, I think first and foremost, it is a student-oriented system. And so when you really think about what the work is in, a, in an environment like this, uh, it, it takes off the plate some of what some systems go through of just even trying to get clear about priorities. You know, So the fact that our students are the focus, um, the fact that we are preparing them for their future. So one of the other strengths is that there is a, uh, an articulation of uh, what a student experience should look like from kindergarten through uh, getting that the post-secondary, having them graduate and then prepared uh, for their next journey, whether that be enlisting, employment, uh, education, um, or going right into the career pathway. So, um, so I think the strength of having an articulated uh, point of view about our graduate and about uh, being prepared uh, for the future is a strength. I think in terms of having students first in this environment, I feel like that's a strength. And then this organization does a really good work with developing um, teachers and leaders. And so there is one of the things I think uh, persons who are other educators would say about us is, you have great professional development. You have uh, really strong people in terms of uh, curriculum, our technology pieces. And so there, there's a real strength in our senior leadership. Now, how do you help, whether it's central office or it's building principles, how do you help leaders accept and make the required changes that um, um, are going to be necessary as education, like so many other, you know, professions keeps changing, you know, how do you, you help people make change? Yeah, I, I think part of it is um, staying really in tune um, to the changing landscape uh, of our community. So not being so focused in the here and now that we aren't also watching the trends. And so I think we do a nice job of being very focused in the present, but keeping our eye on the horizon to understand, you know, kind of what's changing and what it might mean uh, for our students, our staff, and or the organization in general. Um, then I think we, again, develop people really well. So we do a nice job at feedback, uh, of having um, more personalized uh, plans uh, for all involved, both for students, but also for staff members as well in the organization. Now, when you talk about looking forward, I have to look back for a moment and ask your observation on two things. Sure. 
I found out kind of accidentally, and um, as an executive coach, having a, a female superintendent as a client, that one of like the last old boys clubs is, is <laughs> superintendents. Yeah. I mean, like you got to be old and you got to be white, pretty much, and and that's really one of the last old boys clubs. So I know you don't pick superintendents, but as you look to the future. What would you want to see happen with superintendents? There's 600 in some school districts yes. in Ohio. Yes. Let's just say very, very few African-American superintendents, fewer female African-American superintendents, and not a great number of female superintendents. Right. How does that change? No, I, I, I believe that's so. And I think it, it changes. Um, with being uh, the state being more intentional um, about uh, the definitions of leadership and making sure that uh, we are being inclusive. I think it's up to us in the profession to make sure that we're talent seeking, that we're always looking for others like myself who were tapped and persons encourage me um, to aspire to greater levels of leadership and then uh, really developed me uh, into uh, being able to sit in the seat today. So the mentoring that took place, things of that nature. Uh, but I do think it's a, it's a call to action uh, that we're not even seeing just in our profession, uh, but in many professions. But um, this is our moment because in this year, I do believe in Ohio, this is one of the highest number of female um, superintendents that has been uh, in the state. Uh, there are a lot more newer superintendents after the pandemic anyway, uh, to be able to assume the seat for the first time. So this is our chance to not only as I sit in the seat today, I always say that I'm sitting here for the young children of tomorrow uh, that can see themselves, whether they be a female or uh, some other representative of some other culture or perspective, things of that nature, that we continue to diversify. And do when you do go to a school, say an elementary school, does it resonate with, with elementary school children that they're seeing a female as a superintendent, that they're seeing um, you know, a minority as a, as a superintendent? Does that resonate with them? Absolutely. So um, as I've been out and about to the schools, Actually, it's heartwarming to see students' reaction um, to me uh, in this role. And I don't take it for granted, but it is kind of like this, this wow, you, you really are sitting in that seat, you know, where people are reaching out uh, to say, either you look like me uh, because you are female, you look like me because you are a woman of color, um, you, you are probably understanding my experience because uh, although you're older, uh, you still have uh, some level of connection. So it's just the ability uh, also to be an alum and to be serving as well, that you, you are an alum of this district. I'm able to connect with our students and our staff members on just a, a lot of levels. And so it hasn't gone unnoticed Unnoticed. and I do appreciate that. Today, we are talking with the new superintendent of Akron Public Schools, Christine Fowler-Mack. Before I turn to the uh, COVID, which I, I have to turn to in just a moment, but before I do, um, COVID aside, what are some of the major issues that face education today? First, I'll go with education today. Right, and I would say education today, we are still in, uh, transition, we're transforming. So we were forced uh, into um, really a state of quick response. And I think the field uh, did a nice job. We were highly collaborative and very responsive in our respective uh, places to what the needs are of our students and families. But we also learned a lot. So we saw a lot, we saw uh, very closely uh, the, the different levels of need, uh, even just the having access to education in a virtual environment showed the difference of who had already uh, the supports in place, the technology, the broadband access, things of that nature, and who didn't. So we're still in a state of um, 
trying to respond to all that we learned uh, in education while we're still being held accountable uh, for having students meet or exceed uh, high standards. And so that continues to be um, a challenge. Um, and not only a challenge just uh, because of what we must do for our students, but what we must do for the staff that work with students. And so really developing our staff who, when they were trained, they weren't trained uh, to function like we're functioning today, to be able to seamlessly work virtually or in person and really personalize towards the needs of our students. So um, that continues to be a challenge. How will a student be different when they graduate from Akron Public Schools with Christine Fowler Mack as superintendent than they would have been before or with someone else? Absolutely. How will, they, so, how will they be different? Yes, I, I think we are, uh, they will be different, I think with uh, myself and our team, um, because we have gotten clearer about what that graduate looks like. And so therefore the types of experiences that that student needs to have before them and therefore then the types of communication, the types of planning and development that we need to do with their families, with those students. And so I really expect um, a very curious, a very confident um, type of learner to emerge from, um, from the Akron Public Schools uh, on my watch, that they will have had a range of experiences with college and or in the career world where, where they will feel much more ready uh, to step into and to accept the number of options that sit before them. Now, students and families have always had options of, you know, Catholic schools, private schools, they've always had options. So really, charter schools are just one more option. But how does one encourage parents to trust public schools over other options? Right, and it, so I would say, um, I would use the phrase, I want parents to trust our schools. And so we want to be a viable choice for, for our families. And so what we want them to do is to be informed, first of all, because oftentimes uh, persons make decisions about schools based on uh, other people's experiences and or um, rumors or maybe even real experiences, but that happened a long time ago. So I engage with people often that talk about their experience um, and then they're making decisions for their children today. And so I will often ask, have you gone into that building, met with those teachers, understood, done some research to really understand the number of opportunities that exist for yourself? So this notion of being informed um, really do firsthand research. Um, and I think in doing that firsthand research, in experiencing our school culture, um, in seeing our results of what our graduates are doing, I have every confidence we will be a strong contender because um, I don't think many other schools or school types can stack up to the numbers of opportunities that we can make available uh, for young people here in the city of Akron. Now, when you say be informed, that, that gives me a way to kind of uh, change to COVID and vaccination, my you know, favorite topic in the entire world. Um, be informed. <laughs> you know, you're a, a parent, you're a mother, you may have to make a decision about getting a vaccine for you, for your, your, your daughter. Um, what do you think Ohio, if you were governor of Ohio, what would you do for the 22, 23 school year when it came to vaccine mandates? What would I do when it came to? Vaccine mandates. What would wow. you do for next school year? If you were governor, you looked out you know, a year from now, six months, nine months, whatever it's gonna be when we start school, what would you do Or January 1, 2022? What would you do if your magic wand worked and you could do whatever you wanted to? What would you do about vaccine mandates? Well, if, if my magic wand worked, I, I still believe in um, the uh, power and potential of choice 
with good information. So I do understand um, the uh, steps that I think our government has taken and um, in, in this regard, our, our governor in particular, because I feel like he's been thoughtful. And so if I wave the magic wand, I would know more um, in a detailed way who isn't vaccinated so that we could work with those families to better understand how to, um, you know, it might be that some of their choice has to do with information. Some of it might have to do with access. Um, but just to make sure the challenge is, uh, it really, we need to ensure the health, safety, and well being of all children. Mm -hmm. And so even when someone exercises their right not to be vaccinated, that also has an impact on the others who, who have. So I, I would continue to work with, I think we're gaining some ground uh, with every given day, with every effort, with every uh, touch, we are uh, getting more people that are able, we're getting them vaccinated. And I just think we have to really stay at it. The stakes are high and it matters a lot. Now, I was at Fairlawn when the polio vaccine came out yeah. and they gave it to us in school. You know, they, they just yeah. lined us up and gave it to us up, up in school. If your crystal ball worked, do you see COVID vaccine being the same as smallpox or measles or polio? Do you see it being a requirement to public education? I do. I think as we go along, when we think about the range of vaccinations that must occur mm -hmm. for children to uh, be in school, mm -hmm. I do think in the future this will be one of them. Mm -hmm. I think because of the recency of the experience and the fact that it was, you know, things have been politicized on yes. a lot of different levels, it's hard for us to kind of cut through it and just to uh, think about in terms of our health, what, what is best for children. So I'm hopeful that we'll get to that place. How can a superintendent that is not, um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis with, with a student, how can a superintendent affect a student's life? Well, I, I think you do because I think, again, our, our board, for instance, you know, sets policy. Our superintendent um, develops strategy. Um, our schools implement that. So I do think through ensuring the strategies, the priorities, the accountabilities, and the feedback loops that those are strong, I think we can touch lives. And hopefully uh, with persons like me, our feedback loops include engaging regularly with leaders, with teachers, with uh, support staff, uh, in general and with students to make sure that student voice is elevated, respected, and included. I'm going to ask you some questions and I'm going to ask for two, three word answers, okay? okay? My first one's actually you get four words and then you get okay. two or three after that, okay? okay? How would you describe you in four words? I would describe me as curious, um, systems thinker, um, student, uh, student led and um, I don't know, um, centered. Okay. You, know, you have that in common with the new CEO of um, Gojo because um, she's also from Cleveland and I've never met anyone as centered or balanced in my life as she. Absolutely. So you two have to get together for a they very do. balanced, I've yes. I've met her family members and so I'm looking forward to meeting her, yes. yes. Now, in, um, in a couple words, what do you listen to as you drive to work or drive home? What do you listen to? Um, I listen to uh, music. Um, music is a part of- Favorites? Uh, what so, are two favorites? Oh my goodness, my favorites. I like jazz. I like, um, I like contemporary music. I like classical. Um, I also listen to talk radio at times and just looking to perspectives. Yeah. In a couple words, your proudest memory in education? Uh, was walking across the stage at Akron U, receiving my master's and uh, being hugged by my father on the stage uh, because he was allowed to be a part of that. And in, in one or two words, your proudest moment as a mom? Um, was... Uh, seeing the confidence develop in my children 
as the result of their educational experience, seeing them being supported and confident. And the very most important question to most people in Northeast Ohio, are you a Swenson's or a Skyway person? Swenson's. Swenson's. <laughs> <laughs> They're in Cleveland now, too. <laughs> the superintendent is the top executive in their school district. Christine Fowler Mack implements the school board's vision by making decisions about educational programs, spending, staff facilities, and hiring principals, all while being a role model to young female students in classrooms across the city and beyond. It may be safe to say that it is not often when a school board president invokes the words of Stevie Wonder to introduce the new superintendent. Our guest today proves that you actually can go home again, especially when you go home as the CEO of your city's public school system. We thank our guest today, Christine Fowler Mack, and add our best wishes to her tenure. I'm Leslie Unger. Thank you for joining us today on Forum 360 for your global outlook with a local view. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.